Hey guys, I'm going to teach you how to improve at a game when you're plateaued and you don't see a clear way to improve the game. So my name is WQ and um, I've been playing video games at a high level for a while now and I have plateaued consistently and um, every time I come out of these plateaus I, I learn a little bit more about myself and I've found ways to improve at a game uh, even though I kind of cap out at my own ability. So if you're playing at a low level, it doesn't really matter. You don't need to improve. You don't really need to think to improve. It's pretty straightforward. You just play the game for a few hours or a few days. And usually you'll power through it, so it's not a big deal. But at a higher level, or even the mid-level, when you kind of get plateaued and you don't really want to make, make the energy to improve again, what, what do you do and how can you stop choking at a super high level? Uh, how, is that, how is that possible? because that is one of the most important things to do in order to consistently win. So there are three bubbles of gameplay, and the first, the the one everybody's trying to get after, what everybody's trying to get is called results. And this is what everybody puts emphasis on. And this is the only thing that matters at the end of the day, but it's also entirely um, an effect. It's completely an effect, and it's completely dependent on your gameplay. So it's actually, completely out of control and therefore it's actually completely irrelevant even though it's what you're trying to get. This is what makes gameplay pretty interesting. Alright, so let's fix it up a little bit. This in the middle, this is gameplay. This is what's happening on screen and it's really important. And you are trying to improve your gameplay because if you improve gameplay, it gives you better results. And your goal is to get better results. And so what you need to do is improve the gameplay and then that leads directly to a result. And a result is anything that happens in a run. So you're going to get better results by improving your gameplay. Well, what? how do you improve your gameplay? And the easiest way to improve your gameplay is practice. But what if you're plateaued? And the reality of how you improve your gameplay is it stems from something called understanding. And your understanding of how the game works leads to your gameplay. And then your gameplay you derives the results from your gameplay. But your underlying understanding of how game the game works, how a system works, is the most fundamental. It's the most important aspect of um, how gameplay works. And this is entirely what you're trying to fix. And so at a low level, it's really easy to re-understand the game. Because if you just play a game for a month straight, there's both implicit and explicit ways to uh, learn. So if you are at a low level and you improve uh, at a game, if you just play a game for a lot, you learn a lot. Your understanding improves a lot through explicit means. So, so at a low level, it's really easy to improve through just playing the game and through learning things and understanding the game differently, uh, implicitly. But um, it's a lot harder to, um, and it's actually really easy to pick up um, specific explicit ways to improve the game, but it's very difficult to do this at a higher level. Uh, this is super easy at a low level, but. So at a low level, you learn some, you learn stuff implicitly and it's easier to improve because what happens is you overcome your skill and so you actually should improve the game. But when you get to a higher level at gameplay, what happens when you rely on learning stuff implicitly is you learn something and then it actually leads into another new implicit learning which leads into another new implicit learning which leads back into the same thing you were learning before, and you actually kind of go in a circle, you don't go anywhere, you don't really improve, and it becomes harder to become a better player, because a lot of gameplay, a lot of gameplay is not about learning more. When you learn more, you go in a circle, um, and then so you try to add more onto it, and this is how people, a lot of people perceive gameplay as, and oh, I learned more about the game, I learned more about the game, I'm becoming bigger, I'm becoming better, right? And so your entire gameplay structure becomes better and this is how people perceive the game and they're like hey, look I'm becoming a better player and then at a high level well you learn a little bit more and service value doesn't go up and so they figure over time you just keep playing the game you constantly keep learning more and more and more and it just you get diminishing returns but you keep learning well this is not actually true it's not happening at all uh, this is a false model where what's actually happening is you need to level up and so gameplay is more about levels. And then you're right here. I'll call that gameplay. And then, yeah, there's a way to get to a higher level, right? 
And let's say if you're at a low level, well, there's actually a lot of ways to get to a higher level. It's not very hard. Um, and then the next level is kind of hard, and then the next level is hard, and then the next level. And then there's this kind of wall where you can improve if we zoom in. Turns out there is a way to get to the next level, but it's extremely small. And I'm a, you might not see it at first, but it's still there, and this keeps going. And so your goal is not to keep learning stuff. If you learn stuff, what happens is you don't actually go up a level. You don't go, keep going up a level. You don't go up a level. What happens is you go up a level, you go up a level, and then you go back down a level, right? Because your understanding of the game does not build like this. It actually, it's more, it's more about levels. Now, this is also a kind of a questionable model. Um, so we're going to put a big, big old question mark here because, um, who knows if this is really true. And I, I think it's a little bit more complex than levels. The original model that I proposed is a lot more concrete. This is the best model of gameplay where you learn something and then this gives you gameplay and then the gameplay you derive results from. So this is the most important. I guess they're all equally important. Depends how you look at it. But this is the mod. This is the fundamental model of gameplay. And so these are also known as your beliefs. Um, you believe in stuff and therefore you do, you do it. And that's why we call it understanding. So in order to improve in a game, ultimately you change your beliefs about the game. That gives you a different game gameplay and then you derive specific results from the gameplay. Well, that's fine. Why, why do people have that? Why do people run into those problems? And I'm gonna um, give you one reason. Uh, I know, I think a lot of you already know this, but it's something called ego. All right, so your ego, um, it, it says to, I need results, and so therefore what I'm going to do is find a way to understand, I'm not going to find a way to understand the game, which is going to derive different gameplay, which is then going to derive better results. What my ego is going to do is, I need to look good, I don't need to win, so what your ego is going to do is, find a result and then use that the result to determine what you can and can't do. People want to win, so they pick a result and then they take this result and then they put this result into their understanding, their beliefs, and then they use this result to understand the game better. So back to this model of uh, gameplay. If you learn stuff, uh, like let's for example, you play the game for a year straight, you're gonna learn a lot of implicit stuff, but let's say you just practice a little bit or maybe somebody who's better than you just tells you, hey, do this and do that. Um, you're gonna learn a lot of explicit stuff. So these are, this is basically how you learn. And um, this, what this does is it changes, this changes your understanding of the game. Um, and it's not necessarily always good. And that's, this is where a lot of problems stem from. And you see this cycle up here where you keep learning stuff and it goes in a circle. There's another um, problem here when you learn a result and then you take this result and you plug it back into this understanding and this creates another huge problem. And so the second really big problem with gameplay is when people take a result and they plug this result back into the understanding because they just, they've determined that results determine what they can, they can and can't do. And this is actually completely, this is a logical error. Results have no bearing on understanding. And so at a low level, this is fine because what happens at a low level is you take your result and you plug it back into what you understand and you get a new understanding. This whole thing leads to a new understanding, right? Because this is a method of understanding and this leads to a completely new result. This does not lead to a better result. It leads to a new result that's completely different from what the, uh, the original result would get. So at a low level, this is fine. But what happens at a higher level, put low level, at a higher level, what happens is this same model happens right here, but then the same model happens. But what happens is you don't actually become a better player because of it. And then you get a very new result that is not necessarily good. It's a different result. And you go into the circle where most people think what's happening is they get a result, goes back into their understanding, and then that understanding creates an even better result and they learn from it, they grow from it, but that's not what happens. Your result goes back into your understanding and then you derive game from it from that and then you get a completely different result. So this goes this goes back into here and then this results a new gameplay. And that new gameplay does not give you a result that's determined on the first result. That new gameplay gives you this result right here. And this result right here might be good, it might be bad, we have no idea. This is the cycle I was talking about earlier 
where you learn where you learn in a circle. You take in a bunch of elves. And the problem is, at a low level, this is fine because you learn in this circle. And then what happens is you become a better player and this circle doesn't matter anymore. This circle actually becomes irrelevant because you now level up as a player. Let's say you level up. Let's say you level up. So then you become a new player at all and your understanding changes. You have a new understanding. And so you're not actually dependent on your previous understanding and you're gonna this leads to a new gameplay, which leads to new results. So you you've effectively learned in a circle at a low level. But then because you're at a low level, you were able to level up, and then you got a new understanding, and then you got new gameplay, which led to a new result. And then you're getting completely different results than what you're getting before. But what's going to happen is you're going to go back into the circle, you're going to plug your results back into your understanding, and then you learn in that circle again. You start this thing, this whole cycle right here, it again outputs a new result. And this is not necessarily good or bad. But what happens is a low level, if you can overcome this, you're going to do the same cycle. And so you keep leveling up, but the fundamental problems of plugging your results back into your understanding always exist. This fundamental problem always exists. At a high level, if you do this, what happens is you plug your result back into your understanding, you get a new result. Now this is all a result of under your understanding. So this is entirely your understanding. Let's put it U and D. So at a high level, you have an understanding that gives you gameplay. And actually this doesn't have to be a high level. If you plateau at all, this is the problem. So then you get a result. And so what happens is the player takes this and then they take this result and they plug this result back into their understanding. Like, oh, I learned something, therefore I need to put the, relearn the game. And then you don't, you don't actually become a better player. And so this result, this is entirely your understanding. And then what happens is this understanding gives you gameplay, which gives you a result. And this result is not necessarily better. People might think it's better because it's, they learn from this new result, but you, you have no idea. And if what happens is you plateau, you've been learning in a circle. And so you learn in this awful circle that gives you a new result that's not necessarily better than your previous result. And you're trying to get a better result, not a previous result. So the only real way to improve at the game is to tangibly learn things that are so consistent, so reliable, that you're actually able to become a better player. And then if you can become a better player, your understanding has changed enough so that it overpowers this problem of plugging results back into the understanding. Because again, what happens when you plug this understanding result back into the understanding is it gets you a new model of gameplay. And this then becomes the understanding which leads to a result. And this result is not necessarily better. We'll put this as result number three. This result is not necessarily better than result number one or two or result number one. It simply happens to be result number three. So at a high level, you keep going in this awful circle and you never actually improve. And you might see slight improvements, but truthfully, you never actually improve. And people, what they do is they just accept the fact that, oh yeah, I'm getting better. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll get better in the future. Uh, yeah, I, I've used this result, like, hey, look, I, I'm kind of getting better because I PB'd a week ago by two seconds, or, uh, yeah, I beat my opponent that I, I'm one, one loss and 20 wins, and I beat him last week, so yeah, I guess I'm improving. And truthfully, not really improving. There's a bunch of other gameplay factors that are involved that gives them a slight improve, performance improvement, but ultimately, they're not actually a better player. And so the goal of gameplay is to become a better player through the understanding. This is what matters. Through the understanding, which is going to lead to better gameplay, it's going to lead to better gameplay, which leads to better results. And so this process I call ego theory because what's happening is the ego is saying that is depending your your skill as a player and depends what you can do based on the result. So this is called this is called ego theory. Ego theory is this process when you depend determine that you can you can or can't do something on a result. And the reason this is bad is because results don't matter. They're not relevant, you don't have control over them, they don't affect anything. They're clearly, de they're completely dependent on gameplay. And gameplay is completely dependent on your understanding of the game. So the only actual real way to improve is to understand the game better. Now, the thing is, at a low level, this is easy. At a mid-level, it's not that difficult. At a high level, if you're feeling really good, it's not that difficult. But eventually, your brain kind of caps out, and your skill pool caps out, and your friends aren't as good as you, and they're not learning anything, and there's nothing else to practice. 
well, you can still improve. It's easy to improve if you improve your understanding of the game. And so we're going to find a method to improve your understanding of the game that's not dependent on a result because a result doesn't mean anything. Throw this out the window and throw this whole motto. Completely throw this model out the window. It doesn't do anything. It's not relevant. It doesn't help. So our new model of understanding that is going to dramatic, dramatically improve you as a player is interesting because this model of thinking in itself is actually a is a win more process so what happens is you the new way of improving that i'm teaching you right now is that you're going to find things that are logically true and also what you believe in because the fact of the matter about beliefs is that you if you believe in something that's how you understand the world if somebody goes up to you and shows you my model of gameplay and they say this is logically true and you say i don't agree with it you don't believe it, and so it's irrelevant. And if somebody goes up to you and say, this model is logically true, and you say, all right, I believe it. I think it's logically true, I believe in it. Then what happens is now you believe in this model. And so it's actually in itself works, but then also you believe in it. And this is why this model is interesting because it's a win more process. So you actually believe in it, and therefore you can utilize it. And then therefore, because you believe in it, you can start using it. So if you don't believe in it, you don't believe in it. And this is the same reason why ego theory is a lose more process because what happens is you need a result to determine if something's true or not. And so that result determines whether it's true. The reason this model is logically true is because you have beliefs no matter what. So no matter what, you actually do believe something. And if you believe something, then you are going to get a set of results based on that belief. Always, if you believe something, you're going to get a set of results. And then if you get a set of results, what's that going to happen is one of those results is going to happen. And so this is exactly the its model on itself. The reason this model is true is because this is the model. And so this is really, really interesting and it's really powerful. And this is exactly why. This is exactly why this in itself is a win more model. So the model works because it works, which sounds like it sounds pretty interesting. It sounds pretty wrong. How is it possible that something works because it works? Uh, that that sounds like a um, logical fallacy, but actually it it is true and it does work because um, there's one thing that is really important, and it's the only things that can happen can happen. So does this model work or not? We've established what it is, but does it work or not? Well, there's one there's one argument I use. It's so if something happens, can it happen? Can can anything happen that doesn't happen? So we're gonna look at a this timeline. This is the year. Is this current? This is the current moment, and this is some point in the past. And ever through history, things will happen. And so my argument is that only these things that happened can have happened because they're the only things that could have happened. So if you if there's a if there's an argument that could argue that multiple things could happen at the same time, and this is actually true. This is in fact true, because we live in a function of time. We live in a mathematical function um, that is some complex number. So it's f of x equals some complex variable, a. And then there's another complex variable with a modifier, I, which I don't know what it is. It's called B. And then there's more complex variables. So we'll call this C. Uh, so this is a function of time. But the point is you, you only have, and then we'll multiply this all by Y. So the point is, so this is a, this is a function of life. And X, your X value is time. Your X value is obviously time and your Y value these values right here is what's happening. And right here, what the Y value is the output. And so this actually is the game model of gameplay where time, only one thing can happen. And this is, this is your results right here are determined by your, your results are determined by your gameplay, which is exactly what's happening. And then your understanding of the world, which is the modifiers. So this is actually the function of this is a function of time. This is a function of reality, which is pretty simple. And so this is why this actually is logically true because only one thing can happen at any moment. There's no point in time where two things can happen, right? You, you can't get two identical things happening at one point. This is not this is not possible. And so if you graph this function, you'll get let's say you get some value, right? So this is some point in history where there are events that happened at these tickers. This is time right here. And then there's events that happen, which is, which is the Y values. And these Y values are dependent on the gameplay. And so this is a function. This is what would happen if we were not living in a function where you get some value and then it would 
turn back where this is not possible ever because this is these are points in time so there's no point in time for example this point in time where multiple things can happen now multiple things can happen at the same time but there can't be multiple realities that exist so this would say this would argue this function right here this not non function this equation would function would argue that multiple realities are existing at once which is not it's not possible this is not a possible thing at least for humans at least this three-dimensional world we live in because of time we can only exist in this function where only one thing can happen to us i think if you're a higher level dimensional being you could exist in multiple realities at one point or multiple moments in time at one point for us it's not possible. humans it's not possible now maybe it is possible personally I think it'd be pretty cool if it was possible. I have no idea. Uh, in, in gameplay, if you look at specifically the gameplay, it's not possible. So because of this function right here, what happens is that this train of thinking actually does become a true thing where you have understanding, which leads to gameplay, which leads to results. So it actually does become true because this is true because only what happens can actually happen. Nothing else could have happened. Nothing else can change from what happens. So this is actually arguing for fate and saying, hey, fate is actually a thing because only something, one thing can happen, exist at one moment. So therefore, in the future, only th one thing will exist. So my argument for gameplay is to actually improve your understanding of the game so that your odds of having a better result are much better. So the, the only thing that matters in the long run is improving your fundamental understanding of the game so that in the long run, your results get better. And this is really interesting because if you start thinking like this, you're actually taking this model of natural gameplay. This is called natural gameplay. You're taking this model of natural gameplay and then now you're allowed to apply it to itself. And so this is actually the winning model in history. And this model of natural gameplay, it actually is inspired from nature. So this word natural comes from nature because in nature, only one thing could have happened to allow humans to exist because whatever happened was what happened. And that's how nature is able to evolve and become what it was for humans to exist. So this idea of natural gameplay actually evolves from nature. And so this is really, really interesting. So if you want to improve at a game, let's say you have your understanding. How do you improve your understanding? You have to think logically. So getting this, this model of gameplay is actually the first step in thinking logically because this model in itself is a logical model. And this model in itself is a logical model which allows logical models to work. So now we need logic. We need logic to apply logic to the model. And then what's gonna happen is you apply this logic to your understanding, and then you get a new understanding. And this new understanding is going to derive a better result. Or it's gonna, actually it's going to derive a different result. And so the whole idea is to get the correct logic, because if you get the correct logic, it's gonna give you the correct understanding. It's gonna give you a better understanding, and a better understanding in the long run is going to give you a so much better result that you actually become a better player. So all of this model, it actually becomes non, it becomes a non-factor because you're gonna become a better player by so much that you're actually going to get a new understanding, which is going to derive a better gameplay, which is going to derive a better result. And this result is, is better than the, the first result this result actually is better than the first result and the reason we know this result second result is better than the first result unlike in the first model is because this result would not exist without the logic and the logic if the logic's not true you wouldn't have become a better player and then because you're not becoming a better player you don't get a completely different understanding and so you don't get a completely different understanding and so therefore the result's always better now it may it may not be better and that's that thing is that's fine because if this result never becomes better let's say this result never is not better then your your goal if this if this second result is not better that doesn't matter because if this result's not better what it would have been is a tangent result and so you, it would it would have just been this result or it would have been this result or this result so your art your goal is to create a new result from a new level a new method of understanding not to create tangent results that don't matter because this new result from a new, new method of understanding is going to surpass all these tangent results so none of these tangent results matter. So that's interesting because this mo this method, your current understanding, you're also creating tangent results. And these tangent results, none of them matter. And so this tangent result right here is not relevant. 
And so happen because what's happening is you're going to be able to create and your goal of gameplay in the long term is to create a new result. That's better than all these tangent results. This understanding, this is laziness on my end. It's actually the gameplay that's creating these tangent results. It's not, it's not the understanding. It's the gameplay that's creating these tangent results. So your understanding creates new gameplay, which creates all these tangent results. And these are great and all, but the thing is you can easily recreate them because there's always an effect of your understanding. So the point is to create a new understanding that's going to create a new gameplay. And this new gameplay is going to create all these tangent results. And you actually want this, this uh, gameplay to be better. And the reason this exists or this works is because you're constantly applying logic to understanding, constantly applying this to the understanding. And so what happens is if something is natural, if something is natural, what it means is that it's reliably recreatable, reliably reproducible, reliably recreatable. So if something's reliably recreatable, this means it's natural and it actually doesn't technically mean it's, in, it's natural. Natural comes from the uh, method of thinking and the mathematical uh, proof that I used earlier. This method, what natural actually means is that reliably recreatable is an effect. This is functionally an effect of something that's natural, but it's, it's pretty simple. The actual words don't matter. It's more the method of thinking. So something that's reliably recreatable is functionally natural because the point is if you believe in something, you can always recreate it because you believe in it. So the point is to find something that you can believe in. Using logic, find something that you believe in and then take what you believe in. And if you believe in it, you can always recreate it because therefore you believe in it. Find something you believe in and then what you believe in is going to give you a specific, it's going to give you what I call gameplay. And that, that gameplay is going to give you results. And so if you can reliably recreate something, it basically means you believe in it. Or these things are functionally the same thing. So there are a lot of cases of things that you can pretend to recreate and you, you don't actually believe in them. There's a lot of things that you believe in and there's nothing, there's nothing that you believe in that you can't recreate though. So it's really, really important to not use the ego theory here. And this is the problem and this is why natural gameplay works and why it continues to work and why it's a win more process and why ego theory is a lose more process. Because if you plug a result back into your understanding, you're actually arguing that the result determines what you can do. So you're arguing now the result determines your belief, right? This is also known as a belief. So you're arguing the result determines your belief. This is not true. Results don't determine your beliefs. Results are determined by gameplay and beliefs are determined by you. This is also why I call it self theory because you are your beliefs. So this is also known as self, the self. And this is why everyone at the top says believe in yourself, uh, which is actually, it's true, but believing in yourself is an effect. Believing in yourself is a result and you are trying to attain a result. So what people are doing is they're saying, okay, I need to believe in myself. I need to believe in, believe in myself. Therefore, I will force myself to believe in myself or I will do something and then measure whether or not I believe in myself. Right, and this is what people are doing and this is why it doesn't work. Because this is using a result. This is actually using a result to determine whether you could do something or not. This is when you plug a result into the understanding. So the result determines whether you could do something or not. So you're depending your beliefs based on results. So this is fundamentally not believing in yourself. So what happens here, the problem is that the player says, okay, I did or did not fail or I did or not believe in myself. And so if I did, I did believe in myself, therefore I will continue. And if I didn't believe in myself, I won't continue. Continue with this method of thinking whether or not this was 
successful. This is bad, by the way. It's extremely bad. It's also known as conditional thinking because you're de thinking in conditional sense, you're de determining what you can do based on conditions. So if you change your belief system, and the other reason this does not work, it's a log logical error. If you have unconditional thinking, um, it doesn't matter what you what you succeed or not. Um, this is also known as a belief. So if you unconditionally do something, it's fundamentally a belief. So what's happening is you're constantly doing you're constantly doing things unconditionally. In fact, this process right here in itself is unconditional. This whole process is unconditional because the person believes that this is what they need to do. And this is really bad because what happens is they're losing because of this process. So this unconditional belief actually leads to which is an understanding, by the way. This is how they understand the world. This leads to gameplay that loses. This leads to results and tangent results that lose. Because they are actually dependent on whether you win or not. These results all entirely, these tangent results have to be plugged back into the understanding this is why this process is a lose more process. This is why when you plug your results back into understanding, it's a lose more process. You don't want a lose more process. The only way to fix this is by making your entire method of thinking a win more process. This also comes down to understanding this process because once you understand this process and understand why you're losing, you can start to implement natural gameplay and implement a win more process. This is called ego theory. It's why people lose uh, as, as much as they do. It's entirely a mechanical process. This is a mechanical under thing that you can actually look at. You can actually adapt. It's not a mystery. It's not fate. You're not cursed. You're not losing because of a curse. You're losing because of a fundamental logical error that repeats itself. This process where you plug a result back into understanding is in itself a method of thinking. And so this straight, straight up method of thinking, the actual gameplay model of gameplay, this model of gameplay is always happening. And so what happens is you actually plug into the model of gameplay, the wrong model, and then it becomes this repeating process where you lose. And so you lose, and then because you lost, you lose again, and then because you lost, you lose again. Where if you if you throw that away, and you start thinking naturally, and you start implementing natural gameplay, you start creating a Widmore process, where you take an understanding, and then you plug an understanding into gameplay, and then you get results. So this is great and all, and it's a winning process. How do we apply this winning process to your gameplay? How can you stop using a result to determine whether you can do something or not? It's ridiculously important to understand this. And then now we're going to start implementing it. And so your goal is to, basically what I'm saying here, results don't matter. You want to create gameplay that overwhelms your current result window so that in the long run, you will become a better player. So let's say you do a speed run and you get a 129.00, and this is a PB. And it's, it was okay, it was, an it was an average PB or whatever. Next run, you get a run that's very good, but you choked right at the end and you get a 135.00, and this run is really bad. And you're pretty upset with that because you could have PB'd, you probably could have got a 128. And so the next run, you barely squeeze out a 128.57. And this is another PB. And you're pretty happy with that. Well, that's great and all because you got a PB. But the thing is, these are all arbitrary results. 
So this is a arbitrary result. This one, 2857, is dependent on your gameplay, and the same with the 135 and the same with the 129. So the goal isn't to actually get a slightly better PB than you did before. That's not the goal. When you get a 12857, it's an arbitrary effect of your understanding of the game. It's an art it's a completely arbitrary result. So it doesn't really matter. As a result, none of this shit matters. And this is pretty um, easy to see if you get a PB that's much better than these previous. Let's say you get a 12733 six months later. Even though this 12857, let's say for example, you lost about a minute right at the end. It's a very good run, but you lost a minute at the end and you're very unhappy with this PB. Let's say you get a 127.33 much later. Suddenly what happens is that this, this, this run never mattered. This run doesn't matter anymore. This run doesn't matter anymore. None of these runs matter anymore because even if this is a perfect run, it still is worse than this PB. And so what's going to happen much later down the line let's say a year from now or two years from now, your goal is to get better as a player. So your goal becomes to get better as a player so that you can always or easily recreate better gameplay than before. You're not always gonna be able to beat your previous high-end results, but what you can do is create better gameplay so that you could easily or you could re somewhat reliably get a better result. So in effect, the primary goal is to improve. Your goal is to improve and it's not relevant, it's not determined by results. The results are completely irrelevant. This 27 eventually won't matter. Your goal always is to improve for the long term. Now, this is interesting and it creates an interesting dynamic because this is interesting because improving is in effect. This is actually an effect of how you think, right? This is completely in effect. Improving in itself is a result. And so when I say the goal is to improve, the goal is not actually to improve. The goal is actually to get your brain to understand the game as a system where you need to improve. So the goal, the primary goal is to change your brain, how your, how your brain works so that you start thinking in terms of improving. Because if you say, okay, the goal is to improve, realize that this entirely, or I guess let's just say improving, becomes a new part of your understanding, which leads to new gameplay which leads to a new result. And this result is not dependent on the improving, right? What you say, these things are not dependent. This is not, relation. there's no relationship here. So when you say the goal is to improve, be careful of that because what happens is that creates new understanding. It does not create the result. That's not true, this result, it does not create a result. So watch out for Watch out for saying the goal is to improve. You want the goal to be improved to improve by an effect. And so the argument is to use coherent, hard logic to change how you think. And if you generate the right logic, if you are correct about how your logic, you're actually going to create understanding, which is going to create gameplay, which is going to create the correct results. One of these results being, I need to improve. There's a, done, there's a ton of different results like this, most mentality advice and most uh, internet guru get rich quick schemes, it's usually giving you the result. And so what happens is somebody says, okay, you need to believe in yourself. Let's say you need to believe in yourself in order to succeed. This is true in my opinion, and it's great. Problem is that this creates new understanding. It does not necessarily mean that you're going to believe in yourself. It's going to create new understanding that's going to create a new result. And the argument of ego theory is that it's creating this result is conditional and it's dependent on this. And so what happens is it gets plugged back into your understanding. Right? It, well, it creates a new understanding and then you get a different result, right? And so you keep going in this circle. And so the problem here that I'm saying, the actual core problem is the method of thinking is wrong. The macro method of thinking is wrong and then it's creating the wrong method of thinking across the board. And so how do you fix this? It's through natural gameplay. Because natural gameplay, if you can understand how this is wrong, and you can understand that only one, only what has happened can happen, 
what happens is you start thinking, okay, I need to find tangible things that are easily, reliably recreatable. Because if everything's a result, then you don't control anything. But if you can reliably recreate something, not only is it that means it's a belief and it's an unconditional belief, but it also means that it's functionally natural. And this is really important because what I'm arguing is to find things in the game that are functionally natural, that you can functionally, reliably recreate. Because if you can reliably recreate something, it doesn't mean it's natural, but if you can get to this through the arguments, what's gonna happen is then it will mean it's natural. And if you can reliably recreate something, then you're gonna find stuff in the game, find movement, find mechanics, find gameplay aspects that are reliably recreatable. Because if you can find a result that's reliably recreatable, it is functionally natural. And if it's functionally natural, when you create a new gameplay, a new method of understanding, if you can find something that's reliably recreatable, when you make a new method of understanding, which leads to gameplay, this gameplay is going to have these reliably recreatable things in it anyway, because you can reliably recreate them. And that's going to create a different result. And this result is going to be better than the previous result because it, it, has, it has mechanics that are reliably recreatable. So this is actually a very easy way to improve. I can't tell you to do this though, because if you try to do this method of understanding, what happens is People will try to do it and then they will either fail or succeed when they do it. And then what's happen is, happening is they're going to take that and they're going to plug that back into their understanding and they're going to create ego traps. They're creating ego traps and this is going to destroy their gameplay. So I can't tell you this. I have to explain to you why natural gameplay works, what natural gameplay is, what an ego theory is. And then you guys listening to this have to, on your own, make it work, understand the logic behind it then you can become winners. And once you become winners, then what you can do is that you could take this process that I won't have to explain to you, and you can take this process, apply it to your own gameplay, and then you can actually naturally improve, naturally become better players. So this is really interesting. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to address the core problem that people are running into. So let's say somebody has a specific problem, for example, that they are choking. I am choking and I need to not choke in order to win. This is a method of problem solving that's actually going to address choking and I'm going to address more than just choking and I'm gonna show you guys how to use this method of problem solving to not only create better gameplay systems but to address macro game situations that are going to help you out a lot. So I am choking and I need to not choke. So the result is choking. The under, this is the understanding and the gameplay is leads to choking. So choking's predetermined and you're leading you're it's set in your gameplay. And so you have to change the gameplay to not choke. And so when people choke, they get mad that they're choking and then they decide that I need to not choke. This leads to I need to not choke next time. And so I am going to not do the same specific result that led me to choking and slash or I'm going to I'm going to create a scenario gameplay that won't lead to choking in that context. So I've improved, right? This is the circular logic. This is the circular logic that people get stuck into that this is why they keep taking else. They keep learning in a circle. They don't get anywhere. How do you break out of the circle? Well, guess what's happening here? This is what people are doing constantly. Guess what's happening here? They're actually taking the result and then they're plugging this result back into their understanding right this is exactly what i was describing earlier this is what's happening they take the result which is the choking and then they plug that choking back into their understanding well guess what guys this creates entirely new gameplay <laughs> creates entirely new method of understanding which creates new gameplay 
which guess what creates new results and these new results aren't actually new they're almost always the same exact result that you are running away from why are why is it the same result because you're not addressing the gameplay the gameplay right here is not being addressed this is what needs to be addressed and so this is why people keep choking it's because this gameplay factor here that leads to choking never gets addressed this gameplay factor here never gets addressed it goes down it continues to carry down and guess what it's going to carry down into here and it's going to carry down again when you get a same result in a run and then you create a new method of understanding when you create a new method of understanding you're actually going to get this carry down as well Nothing new changes, and so it's constantly carrying down. And so what at natural gameplay is arguing, natural gameplay is arguing that when you, what you do is you get understanding, which leads to gameplay, which leads to the result. And so let's say your result still is choking. Gameplay leads to choking. Understanding is your beliefs. Well, guess what? What of my beliefs is this argument of natural gameplay where the results don't matter. You don't control this at all. It's completely not relevant. So what I'm going to do is just say, meh, I don't care. It exists. I don't care. My gameplay leads to choking. That's true, but I don't know how to change it. So I don't care. What I'm going to do is add logic in here, throw some logic into this understanding, right? And it's easy to create logic. For example, there's absolutely no reason to try your hardest. Why not try your hardest? People will say exhaustion. Well, guess what? Exhaustion is actually not a reason to still not try your hardest. You would still try your hardest through the exhaustion, right? So why are people not trying their hardest? And there's lots of different logic. So that doesn't do anything for us. But what it means is there's a reason to try your hardest. So if we continue to think constructively and continue to think creatively through logic, and we keep applying logic, when we create a new method of understanding, this is going to be slightly better because we have this logic. And this is going to lead to a gameplay system, which is going to lead to choking. Or it's going to lead to a result. And if we create the right logic, this method of understanding is actually going to lead to gameplay, which leads slightly less to choking. And then over a system, over a lot of trials, we're going to choke less. So I actually argue how to not choke is a simple process because what I need to do to not choke actually is to apply something called macro natural gameplay, which is very simply applying natural gameplay to itself. So what I'm doing, my solution or my current per personal answer to not choking isn't to force the not choke. What it's to do is apply natural gameplay to itself. The reason you can apply natural gameplay to itself is because of the re reasons I previously stated. Natural gameplay is a system of thinking. And so what happens is, for that reason, you can apply it to itself. And then what that leads to is something I call macro natural gameplay. And all this does is actually improve your gameplay. So your bottom line becomes better. So if you got a 1, 25, 30 before, well, if your gameplay was better across the board, what it would lead to is, for example, a 1, 20, 5, 0, 0. So these are two specific arbitrary results. And as I was saying earlier, they can't exist at the same time. So you almost never see this as somebody's improving because what's going to happen is they're going to get a 125, 30, and then six months later, they're going to get a 125, even though they got better. So you almost never see this better gameplay being applied to two systems, but this is actually how it works. If a better player got the exact same situations, he would get a better result. And so my argument is to get better at the game. And then as you get better at the game, you're going to get a different scenario. But if you can reliably get better at the game and keep improving, you'll get a 124, 30 eventually. And then eventually you'll get a 123, 59. And then eventually you're going to get a 122. 59. Right, and so I capped personally in Link to the Past. I capped out right around here. I capped out with simple micro interactions. And so there's very little things in the game that I can specifically make faster, even though I found a lot. But that's fine because there's a lot of time I'm still losing the run. If I'm losing time in the run, then I can improve. So then what I can do is 
change my gameplay so that I can get a better time. So no matter what, if you're losing time, you can get a better gameplay. So this is interesting. This actually means that optimal, this idea of optimal doesn't exist. Um, or optimal is whatever happens because, because only what can happen or has happened um, was able to happen. So optimal, the idea of optimal goes out the window. Um, whatever you're doing is optimal. And if whatever you are doing is optimal, then forcing something to be better is not, it's not a necessary aspect of gameplay. So I'm not going to force myself to do something that is technically better, that proceeds better. And this is where we're getting where, what's actually, this, this process is in effect, the argument of natural gameplay. And this is what's important. Don't, not forcing yourself to believe something that you don't believe. You have to figure out how to believe it and then you go from there. So what I'm arguing up here is actually this is understanding. This is gameplay which leads the results, right? And then not using the results. Results don't determine, don't determine what you can do from results. If you plug the result back into the understanding, it, it the whole thing collapses. Determine what you could do from the self or what you think you can do. This is what belief is. This is what understanding is. So what you can do is now should needs to be derived from understanding, right? Which leads to gameplay. This is why this argument of natural gameplay actually solves itself. Not only does it solve itself, it's a win more process. And so it's able to, once this becomes a real thing, once the self understands this, what happens is you can actually stem logic from this and so it becomes a win more process. You see this in simple math equations. For example, let's say, let's say y equals x plus three. And then your teacher says y equals seven. So what is x, right? So this is actually gameplay. This is, this equation right here is effectively uh, this is effectively gameplay interaction. This is a mathematical representation of a gameplay interaction. So, well, it's, it's very simple. This is very simple. So what is X? So what you do is seven equals X plus three. Therefore X equals four. So you get your answer. So how do you solve this problem, right? It, you find X and then X, you plug in Y and then you find X. So this is natural gameplay. What people are doing, this is what ego theory is, what people are actually doing in the gameplay is they're doing Y equals X plus three. And this is why you cannot plug your answer, your result. If you plug your result back into your standing, it doesn't work. This is what people are doing. They're plugging their results, which is four, because they already know the answer. And they're plugging four in right here. And so then they get y equals four plus three. Oh yeah, seven equals four plus three. So yeah, y x equals four. Okay, good. Nope. If you turn this in on your homework, you'll get an x. Why do you get an X? Because it's wrong. You got the right answer, but the solution was wrong. This is happening across the board in gameplay, except gameplay is highly complex and also it doesn't have a specific system of determining uh, right and wrong. So a choke is obvious that it's wrong. Uh, this, this argument right here is called dynamic. Um, when it doesn't have a specific system of determining right and wrong, that's also known as dynamic. So a choke is obvious that it's wrong, but it's not obvious why. So when a player 
inputs determines what they can or can't do from the result it leads in the long run to choking but it's impossible to realize to determine why how it's impossible to determine how it's easy to make an argument a logical argument this is why to show how but it's impossible to determine how now that's fortunate it doesn't matter why we're interested in not fixing the problem fortunately it doesn't matter why we're interested in improving gameplay not fixing the problem so these two things have a different means but the same end result when people try to fix the problem uh, but not improve the gameplay that's what ego theory is and so even though the problem sometimes or often is fixed the gameplay doesn't improve and natural gameplay that actually solves this process of ego theory by improving the gameplay and if the gameplay is improved that problem won't happen so it actually does end up fixing the problem but it has nothing to do with fixing the problem it's purely about improving the gameplay the best gameplay would have no problems but i don't even know if that's true because gameplay the idea of optimal doesn't necessarily exist it's a logical thing that i i want you guys to think about and i want more people to think about this side process of natural gameplay is really interesting because you can apply natural gameplay to itself, right? So when you apply natural gameplay to itself, you get something called macro natural gameplay, which actually is natural gameplay, but it improves the player across the board. And this is really interesting. It's rooted on this idea that you don't control anything. So it's dependent on three things. One, everything is a result. Player doesn't control anything. Um, and this is true because everything that happens in time is a result of understanding. So everything that's constantly happening is constantly a result. It's an effect of how you think. And it's an effect of how the system works of gameplay. And so therefore, none of it actually matters because you don't control any of it. Everything that happened, everything that will happen is an input. It's not necessarily an output because an effect, a result, an output is the same thing. And an input into the system, which is gameplay. Gameplay is an input. What an input is, is everything that has happened. And that'll hit everything that will happen. With, and then that becomes their effect. That becomes the result. And I'll explain that. And then um, the second one is that beliefs direct gameplay and therefore results. And this is pretty straightforward. This is understanding. And then the third one is anxiety. And this is actually specifically a gameplay thing. This is, that has nothing to do with um, crazy ideas. This is pretty straightforward. The thing about anxiety, though, that no one really realizes is that it changes what you can do. It changes how you do it and anxiety anxiety basically comes down to thinking about multiple things so the thing about anxiety is it's pretty much impossible to change even if you're not super hyper nervous um anxiety still is applying to yourself constantly it's still constantly there and it's really 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 important to understand natural gameplay and understand the way to solve anxiety is to not be anxious about something and then be okay okay i was anxious because um my cat walked in so i'll just close the door so my cat can't walk in therefore i won't be anxious if you think like that you're never going to solve anxiety it's really important to understand that so how do you actually solve anxiety how do you actually solve choking because uh, anxiety is what choking is basically so how do you solve choking well let's think about the fact that everything's the result so what happens is people have a gameplay system so also what this means is that anxiety is too dynamic to directly solve so we need a complicated way to solve it but this is interesting. If you don't control anything, things that happen, if you don't control anything, anytime something happens, it's a process. And if you do something, if you do an input, if anything is input into the equation of life, these processes are created. So the primary goal is to not create processes that would lead to choking. Well, how do you do that? Well, this is interesting because what's happening is people determine whether or not they can succeed or they can do something dependent on the results right so this applies to natural gameplay itself so what's happening is when someone does something that they feel like they can do or they overcome something or they learn something they assume that this is the standard that they can consistently recreate it they can consistently reliably recreate it and then this isn't true though because you don't control anything everything's a process so what happens is they stop trying people stop trying on things and so then when they choke they assume it's a choke when it's not really the choking of the problem the problem is that they weren't trying and 
you can actually counteract this if you start thinking about it and then you start looking at it and then you start creating gameplay processes. The point, the point here, and this is interesting. This is really interesting. So this only works as long as a player makes an effort to make it work. At any point they stop trying, the whole thing collapses. So it only works if you actually try. You can only try if you're trying. Now, that's really interesting because... So natural gameplay here argues, how do you get this to consistently work, right? Because the only way it works is if it works. Well, that sounds like an impossible paradox, except I already solved an impossible paradox. Ego theory through natural gameplay. So how do you get this problem where if it only works, if it works to work, well, this is how you apply natural gameplay to itself. This is where natural gameplay comes in. It would argue that in order for this to work, you would have to change the belief system. How do you change the belief system? All right, so what do you do? How do you address anxiety? You stop resetting, stop making excuses, more importantly, stop making excuses for why you mess up when it's an anxiety factor that made you up and so you're not good enough to overcome the anxiety factor rather than a mistake that most people would ignore on or most people would reset on. And this can be done in practice. It can be done in runs. It doesn't matter. What matters here is addressing the anxiety and learning why anxiety is messing the player up. Ultimately, what's important here is that you apply natural gameplay to the natural gameplay model. It's absolutely mind-blowing. It's very interesting. And if the logic is correct, this actually should lead to not choking. More importantly, what it leads to is better gameplay, cleaner gameplay, more efficient gameplay, and so you get better results. And when you're getting better results, the end result is that you're not choking. And so you could constantly get better and you would choke less and less and less. You're always gonna choke, people are always gonna choke as long as anxiety exists. So I'm saying it's not necessarily the choking that matters or not, it's improving as a player is going to overcome the choking in the long term. And that's far more important. It's actually the only thing that matters. These things that I've targeted, not resetting, stop making excuses, apply thinking about anxiety and thinking about how anxiety affects gameplay these things are what youtube gurus life coaches these things are what everybody says this is what the novels say this is what famous people throughout history tell you but these things i've come to these are effects of understanding they're not a result that's implemented into a mode of understanding that outputs a different result these are effects of understanding that are, were already outputted as a result. Which what that means is this, this is going to work. This is going to work. What people say, what the YouTube gurus say, what your fake life coaches say, doesn't work. This is why, and this is what works.